Hello again everyone, uh, this is Dr. Farouk from ER Skill Lab UK. Today uh, I will give you a scenario of a question that may come into African Intermediate and also it will help you in real life. Okay, This question is coming from toxicology. Let's say this is a 42 year old gentleman, GCS 12, he had some toxic level of ethylene glycol which is also known as antifreeze and the scenario in the question they'll give you some values on the left or in the questions it includes electrolytes urea creatinine pH and osmolality I'll go to this uh, into this uh, date details later so the question is what is the immediate treatment so someone coming with in the A&E with toxic level of ethylene glycol, what is the immediate treatment? Well, of course there is supportive care. You obviously give fluids, you give uh, send bloods for um, toxicology and uh, all the routine bloods. What what is the antidote of ethylene glycol? Fomipizole or ethanol. So. Other than the supportive care, you can give fomipizole or ethanol first time patient comes in in the A&E. The next question is, what calculations do we need in this patient? Do we need to calculate anything? Why? Okay. Before I go into the calculation, let's break down the uh, the physiology of what's happening. So, for example. For ethylene glycol, so ethylene glycol is an osmol. Two things we need to know. This is an osmol. Okay. Which can become an anion later. So ethylene glycol becomes glycoaldehyde and then later it becomes glycoxylic acid. And the enzyme helps this conversion is alcohol dehydrogenase. So we can see it starts with as an osmol, ends up as an acid or anion. The antidote we want to give immediately inhibits this enzyme. Okay? So we're giving here for mapizole. or ethanol okay so what calculation do we need so the question is we want to know what level of metabolism the patient states in at this moment is he coming in the early stage as an osmols when initially it's still not enough breaking down, turning into an anion or acid. So, is it too early or is it too late? We don't know the onset of ingestion or we don't know how the how, how inside in the body is affecting now. So, we need two calculations to find out what level this toxic alcohol is in. So, first we want to know, is it initial phase, do we? is called the calculation we do is osmolal gap to find out what level here osmolal gap and for this we want measured osmolality minus calculated osmolality
and major osmolality should be given in the laboratory. So this is the osmolality is 380. So major osmolality is 380 milliosmol per, per liter. And then we need to calculate the osmolality from the other values. And I will tell you soon. Okay. And how do you calculate anion gap? We all know. So anion gap is sodium plus potassium minus chloride plus bicarbonate. So let's give you the formula for osmolal gap. So there are different formulas. The formulas that was given from the Royal College of Emergency Medicine is something like this. So it's, I'm calling it calculated osmology equals 1.86 time sodium plus glucose plus urea plus ethanol. And all these together divided by 0.93 okay let's plug in some values so let's 1.86 times sodium is 135 glucose is 7 plus urea 17 and ethanol is 75 divided by 0.93 you're allowed to use calculators to do this once you've done this the result will be 376 milliosmol per liter so we know this calculated osmolality if you plug in here 376 380 minus 376 is 4. So osmolal gap is 4. What is the normal osmolal gap? Anything I would say less than 10 is normal. So 4 is normal. What's the anion gap? It's sodium plus potassium minus chloride and bicarbonate. Everybody knows this formula. So that's sodium is 135 plus potassium 4.6 minus chloride 100 and bicarbonate is 9 so that's 139.6 minus 109 is 30.6 so a non gap is 30.6 which is high normal anion gap can be from 12 to 16 so it's 30 is obviously too high so we have a alcoholic patient toxic with you know toxic poisoning on ethylene glycol who came in with confused <clears throat> Uh, GCS is 12, had toxic level of alcohol, who has anion gap of high anion gap metabolic acidosis because we can see pH is 7.31 and bicarb is 9. So it's a high anion gap metabolic acidosis with normal osmolal gap, which is 4. Okay. So the question is, yes, we've done the calculations what is the final treatment okay by this calculation see so already seen that patient is not in early stage because the osmolality is 4 this ethylene glycol initially act as an osmol and then later it becomes anion becomes an acid so it has high anion gap so it's definitely converted into acid by the time we calculated this his values and which shows with 
confirm with metabolic acidosis, high NM gap metabolic acidosis. And also you can see there is urea is 17, creatine 165. So he is probably having AKI. So patients with ethylene glycol toxicity with high NN gap metabolic acidosis, normal osmos, AKI, what is the treatment? Well, for mipizole, the antidote only works if it is before the acid level. So ethylene glycol still is the initial stage and we do, we, this is actually stopping from ethylene glycol to become glycoaldehyde and then glycoxylic acid. So this is the early stage of antidote we have been using initially, but by the time we cal did the calculations, it's all acid, so it's high energy of metabolic acidosis. NNK is 30.6, so already the ethylene is already metabolized and osmolar gap becomes 4, which is less than 10. So it's normal, there is no osmos left anymore. All the ethylene glycol has now converted into acid. So at this moment, we need to stop fomipizole and start the patient on hemodialysis. You got my point? So again, we, what we learned from here is we can apply this on methanol as well. So to just to summarize, any toxic alcohol poisoning, we need to know the immediate treatment, maybe an antidote. Then we need to calculate two things, osmolar gap and anion gap, and then we decide what is the final treatment should be. Should he still continue for me proposal? Yes, if it's a high, NR, high osmolar gap and normal uh, anion gap. Do we continue uh, uh, to hemodialysis? If yes, if it is high anion gap but normal osmosis, we need to stop for me and start uh, start hemodialysis, but there may be some middle ground where we can think about uh, both, you know, a high osmolality as well as uh, liver anion acid. So it's it can be an overlapping state, which is uh, we, we might be thinking about both. So anyway, this is an example for you guys to think from from today. I believe your way of thinking on managing toxic alcohol poisoning should change. All we know is a, how to do the calculations and how to think about it. So there will be more videos coming next. I hope all you guys enjoy. Keep in touch. See you next.